Okay, broadcast is now live. It's pretty wild. Huh? It's totally wicked if he join, actually joined us. Let me see what I can do. Uh, it's not in Paris. Yeah, I don't think he was playing on it because we couldn't. I didn't realize we had these, otherwise I would have emailed them, but maybe I'll send them to the, the list anyway right now. Is there a URL for that hangout? Yes. Can you sign me that? Or no. <laughs> or something? Yeah. Let me see what I can do. You just, you just go to Google Hangouts. Or, can you, you just, or can you just email it to that? Yeah, I don't think I'd do any of that, but let me see what I can do. Um, do I trust this computer? Not really. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> do I move that? Yeah, <laughs> you got a USB puppy. Right. <laughs> no, I trust the USB before I get in my life. Okay, so how do we join that, that crazy thing? I'm emailing you the Six zero eight seven two. All right, I think it's set. You should have an email for me with the link. Again? Yeah, to you can email address. Okay. So, so this is the idea. Um, this is the idea. Uh, this is the OWASP website, so it's, it's talking about a method for a method for modeling your application to try to figure out um, what the when you're trying to prioritize what should you do with your application to protect it. In this case, it's not just the it's the application maybe in, in combination with CAS. Um, the idea is that you want to create a model of your application, so you can, in some, uh, in some uh, systematic way, enumerate the various threats to your application, rank them in some way as to how how bad they are, okay, and then you can prioritize, okay, what are the what are the mitigations that you can do for each of those threats. So part of it is just a discovery process. You can just realize, oh, wait a minute. No, I didn't authenticate this, or there's something at this at this point which needs to be done, right? There's some of that. And there's some of I kind of knew about it, but I need to classify how bad it is. And then there's some of it which is just, you know, what do I do to mitigate? And what do I do to mitigate? So when you think of it, you know, mitigation in our context, one of the mitigations could just be like, and I think we I think it's already on the wiki. I think I think there's some stuff on the on the on the um, has with you here, but, but we probably can add stuff, which is, you know, simply there are certain threats, and in order to uh, mitigate them, you need to harden, you need to harden your uh, setup in a certain way, right? So you need to make sure. So as an example, this big one random example we were just talking about, you know, if you were um, and related to some of the diagrams we drew, if you're doing a ticket registry and you want to make sure that um, no one can steal. Um, can, can basically spoof somebody's identity by taking a ticket out of the registry right, and 
um, and becoming that person. Right? And if you look at the, we'll see the data flow diagrams, you can see that there's a, an arrow where the tickets go from one place to another. And so if you don't secure that thing, you're going to be at risk for somebody taking the ticket and then pretending to be somebody else. And so um, a mitigation could be, we simply, mitigation could be something like, um, okay, well, what that means is that when you deploy the application, you need to make sure when you deploy CAS with a shared ticket registry like that, you need to make sure that the network that you're using is secure. Or another one would be if you're using a database backend that you're using, you know, your database, you're doing you know, whatever JDBC engine you're using is using, you know, SSL or what have you and the secure password um, between the two things, right? And that would be something that we would put, I guess, in like a manual, right, in a, in a security, a kind of security application guide so that someone would know that and they wouldn't have to realize it after they'd already gotten you know, broken into it. Oh, I forgot to secure that thing. And the second thing that, of course, you could do is we could actually mitigate the, you know, we actually build something into the software itself. So, again, going back to that same example of the, of the shared ticket registry, you know, if we, we just talked about this before again, if you did something like hash the tickets before you put them in the registry, if you were able to do that, you can't always do that, but if you could, then that would mitigate it by actually changing the software and making it more secure out of the box by default, right? So either one, you know, those are, there's other ways to mitigate threats, but those are two, you know, two possible ways that I think are probably most applicable to what CAS is doing, right? A, a, a backlog of here are things we should do with the CAS software, and then, and then a backlog of things that should be added to a hardening guide if they're not already there, right? Which they already might be there, because I know there is some kind of, I know there is a certain amount of hardening guide there. Um, so the method is basically that we, we, we're looking at which I've used a little bit in EMC, which I'm not going to claim any kind of expertise to, is basically that you break your um, you break your application down using a data flow diagram. So you have um, you know, things which are processes, you have things which are multiple processes that can be broken down further, um, and then you have external entities, um, and uh, and then and then uh, things which are which store data but are not actual processes, so data stores and okay, the kind of data at rest. Um, and if you model your application, um, the other thing you have to do is you model data flows. So there's a flow of data from one entity to another. Right? It's either external entity to some process that you have in between processes, process to a data store, or what have you. And um, hypothetically, if you actually model every single one of those things, um, and you don't have to model them in all the detail, you can, you can model them, you can, you, can, you can actually, I'll show you the first diagram I did. It was called the context of data flow diagram, where basically all of CAS was just like two box, two circles, even though there's lots of things in between. The point is that if you can enumerate things this way, every one of those arrows or interfaces is a, is a potential attack surface, right? Someone can try to get in via that method or get data via that method. Internal hypothetically can't be attacked, right? There's only you can only attack what you can reach in some sense. So hypothetically, if you if you can enumerate every single attack surface then you can enumerate and you enumerate every possible threat against every attack surface, you've enumerated all possible threats. Obviously there's always a possibility that you didn't your model is bad, right? Because for example, you wouldn't necessarily model, you wouldn't necessarily you could try to, but you wouldn't necessarily model every interaction between, you know, any every interaction between your code and the JVM where it creates, you know, creates something in memory. Whereas it could be that if somebody could get onto that same machine and tap the shared memory or what have you, maybe they can steal that, that information. So, um, you know, just because you enumerate, you model your system a certain way with certain external surfaces, there might be other surfaces that you didn't think about, right? So obviously, it's not perfect, right? But this is the way to get started so that you, instead of just going and brainstorming and saying, oh, well, what threats are there against our system? This is a more systematic way of doing it. So and I didn't invent this at all. I use it in the MC, you can see it's on the OWASP website. Um, so you see, you know, an example where I, Building a data flow diagram again. The way that it's done on the on the on the, on the OWASP website, it tends to be tends to be related to um, particular use cases, which which I think is a good thing because when you're doing use cases, obviously you're going to make me think about all the different flows in there. But it is good to also have the 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 case where you just have here are the components and here are all the different types of accesses that go between them because then you kind of get you know the entire set of attack surfaces. You don't want to use that for every single purpose, but it's good to have those kinds of diagrams as well. And then the other thing you have here is these is these boundaries, right? So basically, um, and I don't know, if, 
the way I've been familiar with Rupert using these boundaries is to actually list, um, you know, the way they show it here is it's just a listing of boundary between, between systems. But the way that I've uh, seen it being done again with MMC is to actually, at that boundary, actually list what security controls you have. So it's being done over HTTPS, with the username, password, et cetera. Um, you can do that and copy that and take there. Um, so that's one step. And then once you've done that, that step of finding these different boundaries and attack services, you would actually go to each one. And again, I'm not going to claim super expertise at this, but basically you want to go to each one of these surfaces, or each one of these flows, and essentially um, look at, OK, what are the possible um, what are the possible threats around, uh, what are the possible threats there? And then Stride is basically a way of classifying the different threats that, that different kinds of attacks. Um, and so this is, um, this is something that, again, helps you enumerate. So the data flow diagram is helping you enumerate all the different places where the thing could be attacked. Because again, it has to be attacked on some surface. It can't be attacked from, from the sky or something like that. It's got to be attacked at some piece of some, some holding that you have in your application. And then the, the stride, and there's probably other methods, are ways of classifying against that particular service one of the different kinds of attacks. But again, this is not a way, this doesn't uh, eliminate the need to think about things. Because you still have to think, OK, well, what kinds of spoofing, you know, what, how, how could the guy get in and try to spoof things, right? So, um, there are also, I think, again, we should look more into the OWASP stuff and spend more time. There are also um, kind of uh, threat libraries that you can go to. And I know with the BMC, they, we have some, although they're pretty simple ones. It's like, you know, can, you know, does this require a password and this kind of stuff. Um, but there are some kind of threat libraries, which I think you can go to the low OWASP website to find, which is typical ways that your you know, application could be threatened. You know, so misuse of cookies or this kind of things, which are typical to web application, which you, which you probably use also. So again, these threat libraries make it again easier to not forget what threats are, are possibly there. And then once you've got that, of course, then you want to say, okay, given the threat, the last thing is to kind of um, see if we've got it here. Um, okay, so here you see this is actually what you see here is you'll see a threat library, or you'll see kind of making sure that all these different you know, a list of things that you know, things could be attacked. But you just see the last thing is kind of a analysis. Let me see what we're using. Yeah. yeah, kind of a risk analysis. So basically, there's different ways that you can you can analyze the actual risk of any particular um, threat. So you basically you drew your you drew your application, drew a picture of your application, you tried to find all the attack services. Then you tried to reach attack service to list all the possible threats, and then you try to say, okay, well, what's the what's the risk? What 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 risk does that threat present? Um, and so there's different. Um, Methodologies for doing that, so I guess Dread is one of them. Uh, the one I've used before, I see if it has it here, I can't remember what it's called. It's the, um, there's another standard one out there um, whose name is escaping right now. I think it's on the other, I think it may be on the other OWASP uh, um, uh, site on threat modeling. But there's more than one. There's more than one threat on the uh, last page. One is called application threat modeling, and then one is called threat modeling or something. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, there it is. CVSS, that's the right thing. So they have, again, they, this is another page with the same kinds of, same kinds of uh, information. We talk about Stripe and but they also talk about other. Um, threat modeling system. So CVSS is one that I'm familiar with. It's basically a scoring, a scoring system that you answer a bunch of questions, yes or no, and you give them, you give things a score, and then you come out with a, you know, here's the, here's how you rank the threat. So one of the nice things about doing any, any kind of these scoring systems is that you can, you can kind of list out, um, you know, which things you think are the most important things to look at first. So from my point of view, again, I don't know, you know, no one has different amount of time here um, to, to work on these things, but you know, from my point of view, you know. In terms of securing CAS, even if we didn't get through every stage of all the threat modeling, even if we didn't get through mitigation and such, the fact that somebody has this document when they go to deploy, they have a lot more information than they would have if they didn't have it. Right? So if they have a list of you know n threats and there might be n plus one or, or two n out there, they still made some progress. Right? They still made some progress. Um, you know, this could, this is the kind of thing that could convince somebody who's you know, if, if there's a department that's like looking to adopt, you know, either uh, CAS or SHIV or whatever, and they're like, well, you know, do I really trust this? 
if they have this, this doesn't prove to them that it's necessarily secure, but it gives them an idea of, okay, there's some kind of analysis that I can build on, I can look at it and make my own evaluation. So that's, that's I think, the value of this. So going to what we actually did so far, is something, so I don't see that was the, I don't think you know, I'm on my work, you know, so I don't have to go so sure. What if you look at some logistic computer? Uh, probably just a uh, that shows the most fun So So we kind of started off, this was my, uh, I can't, same thing, I can't, uh, I can't even show you one thing. So this is my attempt at a, at, it's not complete actually, you see some of the same arrows. It was kind of a complete enumeration of, of the different services. This is, this is, again, this is called a context, context data flow diagram. So it's purposely, um, it gets a little spaghetti-like, but it actually has some usefulness to it. It's purposely modeling the system as like one, one block. Now, in this particular case, I really couldn't model it as one block because you can't really model the. It just didn't work for me to be able to model the cat, the cat server and the clients as like one giant blob. I just didn't. I couldn't put my head around that. So maybe there's some really smart way of doing that. So I just said, all right, I'm going to cheat. I'll make it two blobs. Even though potentially, hypothetically, the context of the should be one blob, it's two blobs. Um, so that's. Oops. Wait. So, can't so that's that's uh, that's one diagram, and then uh, Jerome uh, did a better job and actually went and looked at different um, different use cases and started to do uh, more use case centered diagrams. So this is kind of a starting point, but we didn't really, you know, the, the real after we get to the starting point, the real thing is to kind of get to okay, analyzing analyzing the threats and the mitigations and things like that. Um, one of the things we talked about. On the call um, was something that's actually not diagrammed here quite. I'm not sure if it is or not. Um, but um, I'll just mention it and then we can, we can figure out how we want to proceed. Um, I was thinking about this and looking at these diagrams. Um, if you think about the CAS REST protocol, so it's doing a very restful, resty kind of thing, right? You want to create a service ticket. So in, in, uh, in REST, everything's a resource, every resource is a URI, right? So you create you go post your username and password, you get a TGT. That TGT is a URI. And then when you want to get a service ticket, you post to the URI. What, what you end up having is you have a, a fairly sensitive piece of information, the TGT in the URI itself, which if you look at the, if you think about it, is really not what you're supposed to do. Right? I mean, the, the HTTP spec, I think it's HTTP spec says, you know, don't put sensitive information in the URI, put it inside the, put it inside the body of the post. So already, you know, from looking at that, there's one thing that's, again, it doesn't automatically make the system insecure because you actually have to be able to get at that URI. But what it means is that what you thought of, like, for example, as your, you know, your access logs, which you formally thought, well, the access log is pretty, you know, it's not something you just want to hand out, but right. if you, someone gets it, they can't necessarily just attack the system. Now the access log becomes, if you can get it within whatever your CAS Expiration of ticket expiration is four hours, two hours, four hours. You know, within two hours, you can actually attack somebody. So that's an example of something that you know, we kind of have got. I mean, something looking at these diagrams right. and, and something we should. That's actually one thing we should put yeah. up and, and, and write on the on the you know on the um, you, know, you know write down as something that's a threat. And obviously, your mitigations are you know be careful with that log file <laughs> is one thing. You know, be careful, more careful, and then we, we should probably find it. TGTs and parameters. Right, we probably should, we should be thinking about changing the CAS REST protocol to not do that. Um, and um, thinking about the 
on the way, so it gives you rest and nothing. Uh, I don't think you need to have that problem. So when you disorient the irrigation, I think you use the code and see what you're doing. Um, well, the, the original thought behind that rest is designed that the TGT itself was considered as, as a resource. A resource. No, right. I, no, from a rest point of view, right. it makes perfect sense. When right. I saw it, I said, hey, that makes that's exactly how you're supposed to do it. 201. Right. Yes. You get a new resource. Yeah. No, it makes perfect sense. It just happens to be in this particular instance. You know, the name of the resource is not, you know, not something you want to be uh, advertising. So, yeah. um, so, I mean, not to make this a REST discussion or a REST design session, but one of the things I've always found interesting about REST is um, your initial thought about what is a resource might not be right. And you, know, you can happen upon a different perspective of thinking about the concepts where the, the resources are actually a whole different set of resources, but still, still provide the same functionality. So maybe TTT is a resource. Maybe what we're trying to model is something different. So um, that's my that's like my little pitch. Um, so you know, to me, what what you might want to do is you know, I mean, again, looking at these diagrams. The diagrams are there to help us kind of understand what the threats are. So you know, we take the diagram. One thing we could do with our time, if, you know, the, if this is a good idea, see how far we get. Is you know, take some of these diagrams and we, and we transcribe them onto the board you know, instead of them there, and then actually look through. You know, take kind of this. Um, you know, go down, let's say, using um, uh, using uh, uh, the you know, right? I know Stride is one. Red is the is the is is ranking how they're used. Um, and actually go through and look at it. Okay, you know, what are the what are the possible threats of making that? And try to you know, start and start get the process started. Because I know certainly, from my own perspective, you know, I know bits and pieces of CAS that I've worked with. I certainly don't have a comprehensive Understanding of all the different things, you know, all the different possible you know, operations and, and attacks and all kinds of things, and, and people, you know, when you get all the people together and have the experience, that's where you get, you know, that's where you get, uh, get something, you know, get something wrong. So, I mean, does that sound reasonable? That sounds good to me. Uh, I'll take that as a suggestion. Yeah. 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 You know, I think there's, there's kind of two things I think that this group could, could start actually get to work with. One is kind of validating the data flow diagrams yeah. to begin with by drawing them and walking through them. Right. And then as you said, um, you know, I think it's having a different model, so we're going to work about the same. Yeah. So do we want to start with one of these? Yeah, we could do that. Um, but we probably want to just go off on the, I don't know if I want to get closer or something, but go on the board and draw it rather than trying to, there's no way I'll take it, but maybe just take the transcriber or something similar. Yeah, I thought of maybe even just trying to move this over in front of the. What's that? No, it's in front of the back. Okay. Want to try? Sure. Uh, let's see. Maybe we should take this off first and then. Yeah, yeah. Just for a moment. Just put that. Right. Oh, that's good. That's pretty close. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's see what Video of the screen is pretty poor, so yeah, I noticed that. I think if there's anything we want to capture, we'll need to like cell phone camera or something. Yeah, I figured we just take a picture once we get it. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So where do we want to start in the picture or the smaller pictures? Uh, how about we start with the smaller pictures? Yeah. The reason I the reason I, I I'm, I'm powering on the big one is that. It is good if you actually can actually have this big picture that kind of has all the things and nothing missing. But uh, and I certainly don't want enough to make sure nothing is missing. Um, 
Would you mind zooming in a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know what I mean. Arrow captions are absolutely. I made it smaller. Nice. Can you guys actually see the little letters, or is it too small? I can, I can read them. Okay. I'm not sure what the Obviously, that's why I could not. Um, I guess the idea is this is not the obvious, but it's simple. You know, like, you can pass or like, get the, get the, that's too good to be too good to be, bring it to the, bring it to the class file, and this sets the application response response. So what's interesting is that he says HTTPS, but like, you know, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the option, with the option, right? That's always interesting to me. So people, do people run, do people run, uh, uh, as clients under HTTP? I know. Yeah. Only the right. right. cast. cast clients. Cast clients, not cast. Yeah. Clients. I know. We at least at Eastern we have we have a handful. We don't encourage it. We have a handful that was still are doing it, and I'm guessing it's probably yeah, yeah. Ours. Our, our, our take has always been like, you know, if, if it if your app is, you know, and you need to authenticate, and run security. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you need to be secure enough that you got to use your password. Then. Probably a protect against session Right, right, right. So I don't know. If, like, I'm not sure. To me, I'm not sure if that's even worth. So yeah, I mean, actually, I think that's been a common, yeah, yeah. commonly known in the community. So. You know, it's funny, what do you do with these kinds of cases? You just put an asterisk and say, caveat that, you know, okay, this is, uh, yeah. yeah, don't do this, or, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. Well, I think within the threat model, though, I mean, that's where you document that if you don't run under the S, um, and if we think you should, then we probably should change the clients, at least the official ones, to not allow oh, HTTP. Uh, or set it as an option to override the security yeah, profile. Yeah, within the software itself. Right. right. So, so I'm saying, like, uh, I'm saying, uh, so. You need an override in the client. Mm -hmm. It won't just take HTTP URLs. We have to, like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, we, what our, is, our, our is our is secure <laughs> equals true. Well, that's part of the, right. No, that's yeah. literally what we are <laughs> in our, in like, one of our clients is you really need it. You can set this option, but um, you know it's well documented. You know, don't do this unless, unless you know it's absolutely necessary. And that was mainly as a as a integration method, you know, like over time, like get all the right. clients initially on the CAS, and then we worked with them to get out of non HTTPS land. Yeah. Oh, so you actually implemented something like this and clients that you will add? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But isn't that basically the same thing as saying cast server don't accept any services with HTTP? I mean, it's not necessarily clients. I mean, it is the client's job, but if you're going to pass the service URL as an HTTP, if you disable that at the cast server level, you can also protect yourself. So in a sense, that change is already That's done. True. You just have yeah. to enable it. Right. Well, in so. See what I mean? So the, you, in the service register, you basically say disable everything that is HTTP. Don't allow. Right. Well, the only thing I would say about that is that you. Um, um, is it, the, only, the only thing about that would be that if the, if the client had. Um, if yeah, the application had HTTP and HTTPS endpoints. Right. So maybe the starting point is HTTP, but if it went over to HTTPS, it went over to HTTP, starting point is HTTPS. But once you establish a session, if it goes over HTTP, oh, I see. the CAS client would, would let it through, right? Because it would just, as long as it's within the cookie domain, mm -hmm. in, the, in the same web application. Let's say, right. it's, assuming, let's say it's Java, right? The same web application, if it's not all CAS, it's within the same whatever cookie domain. So it will allow it. Um, you know, which I don't, which um, is interesting. So that would be an interesting thing, was kind of make it secure by default. This is not all HTTP, but kind of by default. 
make that an aspect of of the cast time. Mm -hmm. And then you know then have some option to turn it back on if you want to you know, do something this way. Is it a default now that the secure tag goes on with it? I, I don't I don't know, we talked about that a bunch, but I don't remember that actually got into and or HTTP only. Oh actually that's another okay, right. HTTP only is on there, but I don't know if Okay, right. Actually, isn't that no? But isn't that like, so for something? This is you're bringing back memories because I had to deal with this. Isn't it the case though that that's determined not by the cast client, but by in, if you're running the Java cast client, isn't that determined by the container? I don't think it's determined by the Java cast client. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think it's just because it's just the Java session. You, I mean, by the, I don't know. I don't know all the different ways that people configure the Java cast client, but I think the default way, right, is you just, you just jam. The CAS assertion as an attribute into the into the into the HTTP session, yes. and then the container is controlling the session. Yeah. So the container is not going to. You know, really I think what Mike was suggesting though that the CAS server PDT code. Well, oh, that one, right? But, but in terms of but in terms of this, I'm saying mm -hmm. in terms of this, what we're talking about here. Yeah, I know. I think. But I, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Two different issues. Right. So you're saying if you do, but even the cast server, how can you make, how can you, the cast server you can, you can, because well, the TGT is not this J session cookie. The G right. TGT is a separate, mm -hmm. is a separate cookie. Although, can you do anything with the J session cookie with your, um, um, if, you only, if that's all you have? I thought we got to where we weren't setting J session cookies. We are not right? setting J session cookies. So how does yeah, the webflow, web web, like what's the webflow, you're saying, Webflow um, for just put them off the web TV. Yeah, well, no, Webflow need, needs a native uh, uh, HTTP session. That's what the. So in, that in order to drive the login flow, it needs, it needs that native container session, but then there's a support to, to turn it off as soon as yeah, the so login so flow ends and it just, just but invalidates the, uh, the container. Is, is there a way to, like, I'm just, if you, if you hijacked that session during the workflow, what is what is the is window? Is the login? That's a pretty small window, right? The login flow. It's usually it depends on the server container configuration. So probably thirty minutes. Price the fall. Whatever the time. No, 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 but what, because what can you do? Because if you have that session, if you somehow manage to intercept it right at the time where. You can't do anything with it because CAS like, expects a login ticket anyway. Right. There's got to be a login ticket. It's not just enough that you can reconstruct the session, but there's got to be a login ticket at least available. I don't know how it validates the login ticket. I don't remember if it goes through some kind of checking, but there's got to be a login ticket that is acceptable by it. So, again, I don't know the details, but isn't that one of the elements of the workflow? Like, if you could catch, you might be like chasing those here, but. If you can catch the webflow, like, okay, so my, what's driving the question was, is there an issue with I get the my, TGT? The question, my question, my original question was, the TGT is 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 marked as secure. Yes, right? the cookie is marked as secure. Right, the cookie is marked as secure, which is going to help you avoid if you misconfigure if you didn't if you weren't configured over HTTPS. You don't get an SSL. Yeah, you wouldn't. Uh, you wouldn't establish. You would. Um, it's it's not as secure. So uh, if you're not over HTTPS, yeah, then help you because you're gonna, the, the point is, if you were over HTTPS, you could get stolen and that's not really going to. And it helps a little bit, but it's going to help it not. It's going to help other kinds of attacks, but not. But it's going to help someone trying to tell. That's going to help the confused deputy type attack when you convince the browser to send the cookie somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's not really going to help. I'm just thinking that it's not really going to help you. A case where we go over. I mean, these are people who see what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, there was talking about after the security with CAS. There was a U portal session coming up. Yeah. Oh, in see. 10 minutes. Oh, oh, oh yeah. 10 minutes. Okay. Our yeah, session just ended. Yeah. Okay. Wait. 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 From one to two, and look it up. And, and you know what? One thing that comes to mind is like so. Yeah. And, and well, 
it was just a kind of like observation and you can tell me how crazy I am or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, one thing that comes to mind is one wanting to again maybe just simply validate the data flow diagrams. Because even when I when I'm looking at this and I'm like, well, you know, I, I don't see the redirect from the task line, right? So I don't even see like the initial beginning of the task line. So you know, maybe that's so maybe we're, maybe, right. maybe we're missing something here. And so I think it's important for us to really sort of grasp the data flow diagram first off to make sure it's valid. And then maybe have some kind of discipline about how we want to go through it. Because otherwise, I think the conversation can really, you know, because you can kind of think of, well, this scenario, this scenario, this scenario, this scenario, you know, kind of be off in terms of like these and that. But, you know, so, you know, rather than trying to be deep in every single one, like maybe try to work through them somehow. So, um, so I would love to continue this exercise, and maybe maybe we'll do a project collaboration time, or at least take some part of that that time to, to, to do this. Um, and I don't know how we register rooms. So I guess we would, uh, do we have dedicated rooms for that? Do we have. Can you give me an idea? Is that an email where you're supposed to use this language to like, register rooms? Oh. Yeah. So a room with a yeah, we need to get a room with a projector. Projector and a whiteboard. Is it obvious how to do that, right? Mm -hmm. You're saying Tuesday? Wednesday during the project collab time. 1 p.m. to 2.45 p.m. Mm -hmm. Right, this is great, right? Mm -hmm. This one, this is just <laughs> now that we know how to find it. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Should we move the uh, stuff back for him? Uh, yeah, it's probably a good idea. Uh, so we got a security guy. Should always warn me. Uh, I'm going to end the.